Autism is both a devastating problem um, and um, it's still a puzzle largely what causes or what has been causing the dramatic increase in the in the in the, in the prevalence of, of this um, of this disease in the last uh, 40 years or so so it's almost like an exponential increase part of that is really due to um, uh, better diagnosis and uh, the diagnostic criteria but a lot of people think that something in our environment um, has played a role in, um, in, in, in causing this increase. And it's worldwide. It's not just in North America, it's in Asia, it's in Europe. Um, so something uh, environmental. The, the, the genes, the genetic risk factors for autism have obviously always been there. And, um, but something else must have triggered it. And so, you know, some people think it's, it's something in the diet. Um, it, and, and, and that is possible. It could also be something in um, what we do to our gut microbes, so the use of antibiotics, the, um, the obsession with keeping things more and more sterile um, from, th from the day we're, we're born, um, um, you know, throughout our lifetime. So people have thought about this, that potentially a change in the microbial composition, diversity inside of us are, are a cause of this. Now, there's many observations that link the brain and the gut in, in autism. Clinically, the majority of uh, autistic children have, um, have digestive problems, um, constipation, um, abdominal pain, um, discomfort. Part of that is most likely due to the uh, diet, the unique diet that um, autistic children self-select for. So many things are excluded from the diet that we normally would, like fiber, fermented foods. And um, so it's, it's quite possible that that plays a role. Um, and there are people that have thought about this, why do kids select such a diet? Um, it seems to have to do a lot with the texture of foods. Uh, so a very unique disturbance in the sensitivity for the texture, not so much for the content. So things that are soft and um, are much preferred over crunchy and, and, and chewy things. And then, you know, people have started uh, to look at um, the microbial composition. So they looked at the, um, the gut microbes in fecal samples from, from patients with autism and have found uh, abnormalities. The problem is most of those studies um, are small. They're uh, often not well controlled. They <clears throat> we now understand that um, autism is a spectrum, autism spectrum disorder, and it probably contains several different subsets of of patients. So if you just take a small number of patients, measure their their gut microbes, it's um, you're likely to pick up variable patterns because you. It's not a homogeneous group of, of patients. Now, the last thing that's happened, um, which has really thrown a lot of attention to it, has been a study published a couple of years ago um, by a group at Caltech in, in, in California, which showed that um, in an animal model of what's called maternal immune activation, so where the, the mother undergoes an, uh, um, an infection or immune activation during pregnancy, and then the offspring, um, the, the, the mouse offspring, shows altered social uh, behavior. And there's, there's various tests that have been taken as, as animal behavior equivalents to, um, to human autism. Always, you know, a big jump from something, from, from animal behavior to something as complex as all the disturbances in autism. But that has received a lot of attention because in these animals that have this behavior, they have an altered got microbial composition, produce different metabolites, particularly one metabolite that's also been found in human patients. And um, they have a leaky gut, so they have immune activation in the gut. And by treating these animals with, um, that's sort of most intriguing, by treating them with a probiotic, um, um, which is called B. fragilis, um, the investigators were able to reverse many of those behavioral changes and the gut abnormalities um, in, these, in these mice. So this has triggered 
a, um, a tremendous interest now. Um, there's efforts underway to um, produce this probiotic and make it um, acceptable for human use. So it's not a probiotic that you currently can get in your yogurt or cheese. Um, it has to be approved, has to be um, cultured. Um, and But clinical trials will happen in the next um, couple of years that, that will test this hypothesis. Can you actually, by influencing the microbial composition, reverse some of the changes, um, either in terms of the gut dysfunction or um, cognitive and social interaction um, of, of these patients? One would assume that in humans, um, the earlier you could start that therapy um, after delivery, and this is clearly a developmental disorder that starts initially almost with imperceptible changes in the newborn and then gradually becomes clinically um, obvious. The earlier you could start this treatment, the more likely it, it, would, be, um, it would be beneficial. So autism in many ways is the prototypic uh, brain-gut microbiome disorder uh, um, so this model is, is almost certainly going to lead to a better understanding and breakthroughs in uh, diagnosis and therapy, but we're still, there's still a ways to go. So probiotic is, is a, a microbe with um, a demonstrated health benefit. So lots of microbes would qualify for this. I mean, uh, we have 100 trillion of these microbes inside of our gut. So many of those are potential probiotics that if you isolate them, culture them, and then give them to humans, that would be, and that's like with, with this B. Uh, fragilis. It's, it's produced um, in, the, in the context of, um, of infections and abscesses, uh, strangely, uh, but, but it has been shown to have many beneficial effects, also stimulating the immune system. That effect on autism appears to be different from the one that um, um, has been demonstrated earlier uh, from its uh, anti-inflammatory effect on, on the gut's immune system. So it's, it does exist, it just doesn't exist in a form that is currently um, that's commercially available or th that is, would be allowed by the, um, by, uh, by the FDA that you could put this into humans. So the, the, the trials will have to demonstrate the safety, which most likely you know, will be shown. But the FDA is fairly strict anytime you use a probiotic, even the ones that are in commercially available products. If you want to do, if you want to prove that, you know, a particular yogurt is with its microbes, its probiotics is beneficial for a disease condition, you need to get FDA approval, just like for any other drug, which is complex, a complex process, time consuming process, and has, has kind of slowed the, the progress in this field of uh, identifying microbes with potential health, so new, uh, new microbes with potential health benefits.